Where to begin with the Vikings? These guys were usually depicted as being vicious, savage people who sailed the many seas in search of riches, land, and new settlements to conquer. While this is partially true, this doesn't tell the full story of the Vikings. For example, above all else, the Vikings were merchants, not cold-hearted murderers. While the life of the Vikings is very well documented throughout history, their culture was filled with mysteries that have yet to be solved almost a thousand years later. Each day, new questions arise about the Vikings and their lifestyle, and today we'll cover several of the secrets and mysteries about the Vikings that have never been fully explained, such as how these people managed to settle in the inhospitable land of Greenland and discovered America 400 years before Columbus. The Viking Sunstone one of the most mysterious legends of the Vikings is the story of the elusive sunstone. This stone has been mentioned in countless stories throughout the years, but it remains a mystery to this day. It's said that the seafarers would have used the stone to guide them in the correct direction, but we don't know how the stone would have worked for them. For hundreds of years, the stone was believed to have been magical, but considering most of us do not believe in the realm of magic, Good one. we don't really know how this stone would have helped them out. While roaming the sea, the Vikings would have likely used several methods of navigation. Some researchers believe that they would have used the sun as well as the paths of migratory animals such as birds or whales to guide their way. These animals most likely would have helped guide them to Iceland, Greenland, and as far as North America. Though recent discoveries also suggest that they could have used sundials or other rudimentary inventions to help guide their way. But regardless of all this, the mysterious sunstone continues to pop up in stories about the Vikings, with the stone essentially working as some sort of mystical compass. The original stories of this mystic stone date back to the reign of Norwegian King Olav II. The many stories about the stone suggest that it would have harbored some sort of mystical power, but it has been said that the stone may have simply been some sort of crystal that would have been used to manipulate light and in turn guide the way of the Vikings. One theory claims that the stone could have been a special cut of calcite crystal. In modern times, these crystals have become popular for their ability to split light into several wavelengths, creating a rainbow effect whenever light shines through. The stones are usually clear and can create some impressive effects when shown directly in the sunlight. If this is true, the Vikings may have used the sun's rays and the color spectrum as a way to guide themselves around the ocean when there was no land in sight. This may also explain why so many people thought the rock was magical. Just think, you're back in the year 1000 and know virtually nothing about science, technology, or physics. Out of nowhere. A Viking comes forward and shows you a strange clear rock that is able to project rainbows across the room at a moment's notice, using nothing but the power of the sun. That'd be pretty crazy, right? This could be where the stories of the mysterious sunstone have come from. People simply couldn't understand how light could be projected from a stone in such an incredible way so they assumed it was some sort of witchcraft or magic. The only problem with a crystal like this is that it could not have been used during fog or rain, which likely explains why the Vikings would have also relied on migrating animals to guide their paths. This is all just a theory, but it could make sense. Navigation with the Twilight Board when the sun had set and the Vikings were left in the darkness, they still needed a way to guide themselves to safety. Scientists claim that this is where a strange wooden disc would have proven beneficial. It's a sunboard. These discs were found as early as 1948 in Greenland, 
with many people claiming it would have belonged to the Vikings and could have helped guide them in the darkness of the night. So far, we've only found a portion of one of these boards, but a team of researchers did their best to recreate the rest of the board to try to figure out how the Vikings would have used it. At the moment, we honestly have no idea what the board would have been used for or how it would have been used. However, a team of researchers at a university put their minds together and developed a way to determine the location of the sun using nothing but the board, a sunstone, and a couple of sticks. In doing this, they found that a sunstone or a crystal could have been placed on the top of a stick, which would have been placed in the center of this wooden board. Every day, the sun rises up into the sky until noon. By doing this, they were able to harness enough light to determine the location of the sun, thus guiding the Vikings long after nightfall. When this theory was tested, the researchers found that they were able to determine the location of the sun with a margin of error of just 4 degrees. That's seriously impressive for such a primitive piece of technology. Imagine that, being able to guide yourself throughout the night using nothing more than a stick, a disc, and a rock. These guys may have been born over a thousand years before us, but they seem to have possessed knowledge we couldn't even dream of. That just goes to show, no matter how smart you may think you are, there's always someone out there who could outsmart you in the long run. The Ufbart Swords a Viking would be nothing without a sword, right? The swords of the Vikings were given the name Ulfbert swords. This is because the word Ulfbert was inscribed on the blades, with the name placed in between two crosses. These swords were incredibly unusual at the time and seemed to have been created hundreds of years in the future as they were absolutely incredible pieces of art. These swords were crucial to the Vikings and their countless raids. They were some of the highest quality swords in the world and were unmatched by any weapon an enemy force may use against them. These swords could cut through a human like a hot knife through butter. They were seriously sharp, and many remain sharp to this day, hundreds of years later. The quality of these swords was so remarkably high that humans would not be able to create such a sword again until 700 years later in the 18th century. The blades were not too soft and not too brittle, making them perfect for sharpening and tearing through villages. The swords were reserved for the most elite warriors and would have been incredibly expensive at the time considering how rare and valuable precious metals would have been. We don't know too much about these mysterious swords, but most researchers believe that the name that was given to them would have been a Franconian first name rather than the name of the swords themselves. We don't know this for sure, but the swords remained mostly unchanged over the years and would have been created between the 9th and 11th centuries. This means that it would be highly unlikely, pretty much impossible, that they would have all been created by the same person. We don't know where the name came from, but historians say that the name could have been attributed to an important member of the Roman Catholic Church. The name could have belonged to a clergyman or even a monastery, we just don't know. What makes the name inscribed on these swords so mysterious is that we have texts and historical documents from the church at this time, yet no one with the name Ulfbert has ever been mentioned. At the moment, there are thousands of swords like this that have been found all throughout Europe and other parts of the world. The problem is that they've become so popular and valuable that they are widely available as counterfeits. At the moment, we only know of about 170 of these swords that are genuine, but there are hundreds more in the wild that have been created more recently. Some have even been found in parts of Asia, leading researchers to believe that the Vikings may have traveled much further than we could ever imagine. 
The most incredible thing is that the copies are almost as high quality as the originals. There's just something about this design that makes the swords almost indestructible. The Rev Ningde Woman One of the most remarkable pieces of history that come from the Vikings is the famous sculpture known as the Rev Ningde Woman. This sculpture measures just 4.6 centimeters and likely dates back to the year 800. What makes this figure so amazing is that its body is two-dimensional, though its head is three-dimensional. This is unlike any other piece of art from the time, and there are very few human-shaped sculptures that have come out of Nordic history. We don't know what this figure would have been used for, but many researchers believe that it could have been attached to a chain and worn as a piece of jewelry. When the piece was first discovered, the archaeologists believed it may have been a representation of the goddess Freya, though after taking a much closer look in the coming months and years, this is pretty unlikely. They realized that the sculpture had features that both represented a male and a female, so it seems highly unlikely the sculpture would have been a goddess, as the mythical goddesses of that time period would have had rather extreme features of either one gender or the other. It would be unusual for them to show the features of both. We believe the placement of the hands could represent fertility, and considering the sculpture doesn't wear any sort of headgear or hold any weapons, it's most likely a woman that would have worked alongside Odin, possibly a shield maid. The Vikings of Greenland We finally make our way to the Vikings of Greenland. We know the Vikings likely passed away sometime around the 15th century and that for many of them, their final resting place would be in Greenland. The final documented event in Viking history took place in 1408 and tells the story of Sigrid Bjorn's daughter and Thorstein Olafsson getting married. After this, it seems like many of the Vikings returned to Europe even though we have no idea why they would have done this. They had managed to live through the harshest elements for over 400 years, yet they suddenly called it quits and moved back to England without a moment's notice. The story of the Greenland Vikings takes us back to the year 981, when Eric the Red began setting up his first settlement there. We don't know why he named the settlement Greenland, as it was covered with ice and snow back then, much like it is today. History tells us that the land would have been slightly warmer than it is in modern times, but only by a little bit. The settlement would mostly live off of fish and other marine life, and they would trade walrus teeth for goods or services as they were highly valuable. We don't know much for sure, but it's possible the Vikings abandoned Greenland when a short ice age overtook the area in the 14th century. They may have been unable to weather the cold and were forced to move back to Europe to survive. Another theory could be that a plague or sickness swept through the area and threatened the lives of most of the Vikings. The Black Death swept through Iceland between 1408 and 1414, so it's possible it could have made its way to Greenland as well, forcing the Vikings to abandon their posts and leave for greener pastures. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.